Sean Fain, I think this is going to be a big deal. This labor uh, sort of resurgence that we've seen over the past couple of years, I mean, it's been coming. We've talked about this uh, many times with different uh, 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 writers and reporters and uh, uh, labor officials that it's been growing over the past decade, really in the wake of Occupy and more. Um, and certainly COVID, I don't think is... Um, a hundred percent responsible for it, but is significant has a significant impact on this. I mean, the organizers that we've had and the work labor, uh, the workers that we've had on that have been organized and have mentioned it almost yeah. always when we talk. Without about a doubt, it. I mean, it's impossible that it didn't have a big influence. But people got to remember that you had the red state revolt, uh, the teachers, you know. But uh, this has spread wider to teachers, and, and and certainly COVID sort of laid a lot of things bare. Um, and uh but sean fain has taken the the bull by the horn it doesn't necessarily i mean you could argue that covid may have helped a lot of these sort of like union reform movements but also this has been growing and um much of that developed in that uh eight years that uh barack obama was failing to meet the standards that democrats were holding him to on that accord he came in promising he was going to put his soft shoes on and then we saw strikes out in madison wisconsin and he didn't show um and and all the while by the way this was the wake of the economic collapse where uaw workers in particular were asked to make significant to cuts to eat it to eat things like cost of living adjustment which is the number one way that they get pay raises and there were a lot of promises made by ceos and the democrats did nothing about it until this moment yep. i mean but, until until they took the bull by the horns as you say so fain alluded to this uh when they signed their contract but they uh they had the contract uh come up for renegotiation in may of 2028 and he wants the rest of the union movement to peg their contracts to the similar day. And here he is uh, talking about it at the UAW um, uh, conference um, just yesterday. Good. Something that's not talked about a lot, but it's very significant, is we set a new contract deadline for May the 1st, 2028. May Day, International Solidarity Day. We did this for two reasons. I've always thought in my walk as a union rep that September was the worst time in the world to be going out on strike because sales start lagging when we get into the winter months. May made a hell of a lot more sense. But it also made sense to do it in a unified approach. We got to get back to the days. We got to pay for our sins of the past. Back in 1980, when Reagan at the time fired the PAC co-workers, everyone in this country should have stood up and walked the hell out. We missed the opportunity then, but we're not going to miss it in 2028. That's the plan. We want a general strike. We want everybody walking out, just like they do in other countries. This is the first time I can remember, and maybe it happened back in the... the the 70s and 80s, I don't recall it, but this is the first time I can remember where you had a major union leader saying the words general strike. Oh, and yeah. not, I mean, basically calling for one. I mean, what? This has got to be hearkening back to pre Taft Hartley days. Like, we're talking uh, I, that kind of, I mean, this is the kind of action that Taft Hartley was designed, right? To, to prevent, to prevent, to make illegal. Well, and here's the thing is that, um, you cannot uh y y y the labor law in this country prevents unions from doing solidarity strikes across industries however if your contracts are coming up at those times and these are uh these are and you're you know you come out of contract uh in june of 2028 yeah it's a it's a totally different ball game and so uh, this is good to see and we had other uh union news um the we had spoken i think to one of the california state uh um uh faculty hadn't we I believe um so. and they had planned a five-day strike that was supposed to go on this week and after one day of striking 
there's 23 um, colleges, uh, campuses, I should say, of the California State University uh, system, representing um, about 29,000 professors, lecturers, counselors, librarians, coaches. Um, after day one, they uh, the strike was settled. Mm. It includes higher salary floors for the lowest paid workers, safer workplaces, expansion of parental leave, and uh, union leaders say the agreement includes a 5% salary increase retroactive to July 1, among other benefits. So um, that's a good sign that, yeah. they, uh, that it took them one day until they agreed on that. Pilots at Southwest approved a contract that will raise their pay rates by nearly 50% by 2028. Do we know when that contract ends? That's a good question. Um, don't know. But maybe it, maybe it ends in 2028. Um, the uh, Southwest Airlines Pilot Association, 11,000 pilots ratified the agreement to from a uh, with a, uh, 93% um, to 7% margin. And that agreement followed more than three years of bargaining, which... Um, You'll recall, in 2022, and Southwest Airlines is now being uh, fined for this, they had inadequate staffing. A lot, basically what happened, and this is again why we need to fully regulate the airlines industry yep. again. Um, but basically what happened, and this happened with a lot of um, uh, outfits essentially during COVID, and, and, and to some extent was also responsible for why we had um, uh, the inflation that we did is these companies uh, cut back dramatically during uh, COVID and, um, and then did not have the capacity to hire as many people as they needed mm -hmm. when everything just sort of switched back on. And, um, and they tried to basically stretch the existing uh, pilot schedule in, in Southwest and, the, and, it, and the system just broke. Because people just can't function that way. Uh, so good for the Southwest pilots. They just want a, a big uh, uh, contract. Um, quickly, the Senate is nearing a deal. They really want to get that supplemental done. It's unclear whether the deal will pass the House because the issue is always going to be, is it is it enough for the conservatives and can... Uh, Mike Johnson afford to pass anything with uh, just Democratic support because it's uh, or I should say that includes Democratic right. support because they could uh, they could get they rid could of him any minute. Kevin and McCarthy and the other thing to note is um, there are days where it is anticipated now that Democrats will be in the majority in uh, the chambers because the Republicans refuse to re-up the proxy voting mm. that came in during COVID. <laughs> and they have too many of their old guys out sick Yeah, at any given time. Now, apparently, there was a piece just yesterday, I think it was in the Times or the Washington Post, where I think Hoyer said, you know, if they do this multiple times, we're going to, we just we just may go in and vote to overthrow the chair, yeah, uh, the speaker, because it, all it takes is one uh, uh, person to raise the vote. And if we're there in the majority, but I guess from my perspective is like, why are you waiting for it to happen multiple times? Well, they're just, they're probably not gonna do it is the point. They're just threatening to do so. Uh, if they really wanted to, they might, right? I mean, I guess the, what would force their hand is if we actually are approaching a government shutdown uh, with the, the, the two-tiered kind of funding systems that they set up.